Elvis had a health problem called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which can be dangerous but many people don't know about it. His mom, Gladys, also had this condition that damaged her liver. This disease was passed down from Gladys' mom and dad, who were both likely carriers. Elvis's grandma, Doll Smith, also had this problem and didn't make enough of a certain protein in her liver to protect her lungs. This led to her having lung issues that got worse over time and looked like tuberculosis. Gladys, Elvis's mom, had some health problems because of bad genes from her parents. She had a liver disease called alpha-1, where the liver protein is not right and gets stuck, causing scarring. This led to her liver having trouble working and getting cirrhosis, which caused symptoms like yellowing of her skin, swelling in her legs and belly, memory problems, and trouble breathing. As she got older, it was hard for her to do things like climb stairs because of her breathing issues. Her lungs were also affected by this disease. A problem called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency was linked to lung and liver diseases in 1963, but it had been affecting people since the Middle Ages. In 1958, Dr. Clark couldn't know about it because they didn't understand it completely back then. Even today, some people with this condition aren't diagnosed, even though it's a common problem that runs in families. When Gladys' parents were closely related, like first cousins, it made it more likely for them and their children to have this condition. This is because when parents are closely related, they are more likely to pass on the same abnormal gene, increasing the chance of their children having a genetic problem that isn't shown right away. When both parents carry a bad gene, MZ or MS, like Dahl and Bob Smith, the chances for their children are 25% chance to have the disease, 50% chance to be a carrier, and 25% chance to be healthy and not affected. In Gladys' family, with nine children, we would expect 2.25 children to have the disease if the odds are accurate. Looking at the family's history, several children died young, and some of their causes of death were similar. There's also evidence of heart and kidney diseases in the family. This suggests that there might be a genetic issue causing these health problems. Klet Smith died at 75 from cancer, and Johnny Smith died at 46 due to kidney failure and heart-slash-liver issues. Sadly, similar health problems affected Gladys Presley and her siblings. Among the sisters, Gladys had a tougher time because she got the bad genes. Women have two X chromosomes, so they have a chance to have a healthy gene override a bad one. Men only have one X chromosome, so if they get a bad gene, they're more likely to have health problems. This is likely what happened to Gladys, as she probably got bad genes from both her parents, leading to her early death. Her sisters, on the other hand, lived into their 70s and 80s. Elvis's Aunt Effie Smith passed away when she was just a baby, and we don't know why. Lillian Smith, the second child, lived the longest until she was 84 years old. Sadly, Lillian's daughter, Bobby Jane Wren, took her own life when she was 38. Elvis found out about this from his cousin Billy Smith before a show in 1976. Elvis had already lost some cousins when they were young, and he said he would rather die himself than see more family members pass away. The Smith family went through a lot of pain and loss during Elvis's life. Laval Smith, Elvis's aunt, lived to be 71 years old. Her daughter, and Smith, lived even longer, until she was 84. However, her sons didn't live as long. Lee Edward, her oldest son, died at 30 from an accidental drowning. Robert, her second son, died at 39 after falling into boiling chemicals at work. The two youngest sons, Junior and Jean, were important in Elvis's early life. Junior, who was always with Elvis, had some mental issues and passed away at 28. Some think it was because of a brain bleed or an alcohol-induced seizure. Jean, Junior's brother, lived the longest of all the brothers and died at 64 from heart failure. Retha Smith, Gladys' sister, was born in 1910 and died in 1947 at 37 years old. She passed away because of an accident. She got badly burned when a fire started while she tried to light a stove. It's not known if she had any diseases. Gladys was very close to Retha and was very sad when she died. At the time, Retha's son, Harold Lloyd, was nine years old. After her death, he was taken care of by Gladys and other family members. Later on, Harold even worked for Elvis. Gladys' brother, Travis Smith, was born in 1914 and later worked at Elvis's home, Graceland. His son, 
Bobby, sadly passed away in 1968 after eating poison. Travis himself had a heart attack in 1966 but recovered. However, before Elvis's show in Las Vegas in 1969, Travis had a stroke and became very sick. He couldn't talk anymore and needed help from others. He lived for four more years but was in poor health like Gladys and Elvis. Travis also had problems with his liver, which got worse because of drinking. Elvis's brother, Tracy Smith, also faced many difficulties. He was born with a mental disability and lost most of his hearing due to an illness. He lived with the mind of an eight-year-old. Tracy moved around a lot and visited their parents often. Elvis helped him out with money. Tracy had health problems throughout his life, like heart issues, kidney failure, and a stroke. He passed away at the age of 49. Elvis took care of him when he was sick. Klet Smith was born in 1919 and lived until she was 75, passing away from cancer. She was the youngest of the family. Another family member, Johnny Smith, was born in 1922 and died at 46, the same age as his sister Gladys. He had liver and kidney problems and spent his last few months in the hospital. A serious kidney illness called Bright's disease was what he had. Today, Johnny's daughter has a genetic kidney disease. Elvis was deeply affected by the deaths in his mom's family, including his own mother, Gladys. He thought that because he saw many young people die in his family, he might not live a long life either. In the 1970s, he talked about this with his friend and girlfriend, Kathy Westmoreland. They had a lot of health problems like liver, heart, and kidney issues among his aunts and uncles on his mom's side. Sadly, some of his cousins also died young because of mental illness, diseases, or accidents. Elvis knew his life wasn't more important than anyone else's, but understanding the illness and early deaths of Gladys and her siblings can help us understand why Elvis and others on his mom's side of the family might not have lived very long. When Elvis came back from the army, he was a good son. After losing his mom, he felt a kind of sadness he hadn't experienced before. He wasn't the famous Elvis, but just a son who missed his mom. In August 1958, he was only a human being like anyone else who felt pain and loss. His mom, Gladys, died when she was only 46, and Elvis wished they could have had more time together. Gladys was taken to Graceland, their home, to be prepared for the funeral. Elvis wanted the funeral there, but others thought it would be safer at a local funeral home. Elvis found it hard to let go of his mom's body. Friends and family came to support him, but his girlfriend at the time, Anita, didn't fully understand how much he was hurting. It wasn't until she lost her own dad that she realized she hadn't been able to help Elvis as much as she should have. A man named Eddie Fatal went to see Elvis because Elvis asked him to. Elvis showed Eddie his mom, Gladys, who was in a casket. Elvis touched her hands and forehead and talked to her. Eddie heard Elvis say, Mama, you never dressed up for me before, and now you're in the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. Sam Phillips, who helped Elvis with his music, came to Graceland and talked to Elvis about his mom. Sam told Elvis he couldn't lie to him and make him feel better about the situation. Eventually, Sam convinced Elvis to let his mom go. Elvis's mom, Gladys, loved a gospel group called the Blackwood Brothers. They sang at her funeral and Elvis cried a lot. The minister talked about how kind and modest Gladys was. She cared a lot about her husband and son, and also about people who were poor and needed help. The minister said that Gladys' close relationship with her family showed how good of a wife and mom she was. Before she died, Gladys knew that Elvis turned out well because of the way she raised him. She taught him to be kind and helpful to others. Even though her funeral cost a lot of money, her headstone just said, she was the sunshine of our home. Gladys was very important to her family and Elvis would always remember her. After his mother's funeral, Elvis talked to his first girlfriend, Dixie Locke. They cried and talked for a long time because Elvis was very sad about his mom's death. He was starting to feel the pressure of fame and wondered if some of his friends were only being nice to him because of his fame. Elvis also felt guilty about things he had done that he thought God wouldn't like. Dixie suggested he quit his career, but Elvis said he couldn't because many people depended on him. He felt like he was stuck in a difficult situation, like a fly in a spider's web. Now, Elvis felt responsible for taking care of others. 
When Elvis's mom passed away, it was a very hard thing for him, but he didn't let it stop him. He served in the army, took care of his friends, made people happy with his music, got married and had children. Losing a loved one is tough, but Elvis knew that many others go through the same thing. Before he left for the army, he asked that nothing be changed in his mom's room while he was away, even though he would be gone for two years. When Elvis's mom, Gladys, passed away, things changed at Fort Hood. Elvis became more serious and sad. He was told he would be going to Germany with the 3rd Armored Division for two years. Before leaving Texas, he spent a sad night at Eddie Fadel's house. Elvis was worried about how being in the military would affect his music career and missed his mom a lot. He told his friend, a disc jockey, that he thought this might be the end of his career because everyone would forget about him. Elvis was feeling very emotional and hurt inside. Even though we know Elvis became very successful and rock and roll continued to grow, there were doubts back then. Some people thought rock and roll would fade away and be just a temporary trend. When Elvis returned to the US in 1958, reporters asked him about the future of rock music. He was positive and joked around while answering their questions. One reporter asked what he would do if rock music stopped being popular while he was away. Elvis laughed and said he would be very sad and wouldn't have anything to eat, meaning he couldn't survive without his music. Interestingly, when asked about his favorite songs, he mentioned two that weren't rock songs, Padre by Tony Arden and the show tune, You'll Never Walk Alone. Reporters also asked Elvis about his mom's passing and if he wanted to talk about her. He said yes, because as an only child, he was very close to his mom. She was more than just a mother to him. She was a friend and someone he could talk to. Elvis also mentioned a book of poems given to him by a fellow soldier called Poems That Touch the Heart. He liked a specific poem, Should You Go First by Albert K. Rosewell. A friend sold the book later, and we could see Elvis's notes on that poem. These notes show what he was thinking about while dealing with his grief and preparing to go to Germany. When Elvis was sad because someone he cared about was gone, he wrote about his feelings in a book. He believed in God and wanted to be strong. He gave this book to his friend Charlie Hodge later on, maybe as a way to thank him for helping him through a tough time. Charlie was with Elvis on a ship going to Germany, and he made Elvis laugh again with jokes. They became close friends. In the book, Elvis wrote a poem about missing the person and how their memory would help him. He wrote that even though it was hard, he wouldn't feel sorry for himself. He believed that God would show him the way and that the memories of the person would be a gift that couldn't be taken away. Elvis felt the absence of this person deeply. One day, I'll follow you and walk the same path as you. I'll be there for you when you need me. Dear Lord, it's so hard to say goodbye to her. I can't imagine how much pain I'll feel. I hope I can handle all of this. When Elvis had to leave, he missed home a lot. His family and friends went to Germany with him, first staying in hotels and then renting a house. Elvis wanted his loved ones close, so he moved them to different places like Texas and Germany. His girlfriend, Anita, wanted to join him, but the person in charge, the colonel, said no. He was worried that people would think they were married and it would cause problems for Elvis. So, Anita couldn't go to Germany with him. Elvis was worried about not having a job to come back to, so he listened to the colonel's advice. He kept in touch with Anita through letters and long phone calls, making her think he would return to marry her. Elvis even promised a wedding and a child when he came back to the United States. In Germany, Elvis could live off the base because he had enough money. His grandmother, nicknamed Dodger, made his favorite foods which were simple and comforting, just like his mom used to make. Elvis didn't like fancy food and could eat the same things every day.